All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's Wednesday afternoon, October 6, 2021, and we got an edition of the Pocket Change Market Report, your midweek edition style up in the house. Hopefully, you guys are having a fantastic day, a fantastic week. We have uh, a nice little lineup here. We got 32 coins to talk about from eBay within the last 24 to 36 hours, where we talk about some pretty spicy uh, U.S. coin uh, errors and varieties uh, that have been found out there in one way or the other. Um, usually the standard methods of finding some of these coins are going to be through pocket change searching uh, or that's kind of like a general broad statement for, you know, going through your kids' piggy bank, which is probably filled to the brim at this point. Uh, going through bank rolls, they call this coin roll hunting in the trade. Uh, but also on the other side of things, uh, people like to go to their local coin shops or maybe a regional coin show, and they just like to what we call cherry pick for some of these errors and varieties. Uh, you'll find that a lot of the coins on this video are kind of like that low to mid tier type of uh, errors and variety. Uh, traditionally, these are coins that doesn't need to be graded, um, but usually when you go to a show, the, the dealers really don't care a whole lot about the low to mid tier of errors and varieties. Um, if you did find a dealer that did care about them, that, that's kind of like a rare sighting. Um, so generally in this these instances, this is where you can take advantage of picking up a coin that maybe a dealer has in like a, a bulk long box or something like that for a few bucks. And come to find out that after, you know, because obviously you have your jeweler's loop when you're looking through this inventory. But afterwards, you know, you'll buy this coin for two bucks and then find a really cool error variety on there, like a RPM or a double die. And essentially you have taken a $2 coin and turned it into something maybe that's $25 or 50 or 100 or many thousands of dollars. It really depends on the coin that you found. But these are some of the kind of like general methods in which you find these coins. If you don't take the effort of finding anything or going out and actually getting yourself in front of the uh, the raw inventory to look through, you're never going to find it. All right. And uh, another key component to the success of doing this is frequency. The more you do it, the more that you'll have chances of finding some of these coins. Um, so that's what I wanted to kind of talk about. I've never really talked about that in that particular perspective to a lot of folks, but some people would say, well, I went through a uh, $1.25 worth of change and didn't find anything. Well, your odds are going to be very slim if you only did that. Um, another thing I wanted to point out, I talked about grading for just a little micro hair of a second earlier in the video but to help expand on that a lot of what you see here uh, does not need to be graded at all so as you guys know to grade coins it costs money it could cost 30 40 dollars for a general submission but if you went through a company like pcgs they charge an additional 60 dollars for an error attribution so if you're sending off a 25 dollar coin and you know it's worth about 25 dollars thinking that if you got it graded in a plastic slab holder with a fancy little label and a fancy little mint state number or whatever the grade number is on there and you think it's going to be worth 10x think again it's still going to be a coin that's worth around 25 to 30 bucks um uh, these coins speak for themselves so don't grade them all right let's go ahead and jump right into this list we have quite a nice list starting out with a 1996 P Roosevelt dime. Now this one is what they call a broad strike error. Uh, the coin was struck uh, with the absence of what they call the collar. The collar is a, a metal sheath that, that's uh, spring loaded um, and it keeps the coin in the striking chamber. All right, And generally the collar is also a, a is considered a die in a sense that they have the reading on there so coins like the roosevelt dimes uh the uh, quarters and the half dollars all have the little lines on the edge kind of like to to grip the coins a little bit better they call this reading and uh, the collar will have that reading on there so if there's no collar um in, in its normal spot and, and keep in mind these are spring-loaded so if it gets stuck for any reason 
The coin will still strike, but that metal flow will continue to go outwards and you will not have any reading on there. Okay, case in point, your Roosevelt dime here. It's in really nice shape, nice what I consider to be mint state condition coin. I don't see any like glaring issues with it. It's got a very clear date, which is what a lot of collectors love. Uh, so because of that, it did sell for $15. Uh, and that's through 11 bits combined to get up to that amount of money. So there was definitely a few people interested in this coin. Uh, but $15 is the market, which is still not bad. The next one that we have here is a much, uh, much newer coin. Um, you know, you, pr you guys probably see quite a few of these still out there in general circulation today. But this is the 2018 P. So it's a Philadelphia minted quarter this is the apostle islands national park quarter um probably one of your more forgettable designs um personally i i didn't really you know care too much about it i mean it's a it's a nice looking coin but um it, you know by the time the back end of this national park program had uh begin to kind of wane down a little bit uh there wa wasn't nearly as many people interested in the atb series as there used to be so coins like this tend to be forgotten to kind of fall through the cracks until you have that one eagle eyed kind of uh, searcher, you know, that comes across it. Then they find some really neat stuff. They can make a few bucks off there. Uh, so at uh, close examination, there's a number of die chips. Okay. We got one here in the letter G and that's simply just a piece of the die falling off during the strike. Uh, as you guys know, you know, dies and working min press machinery is like a automobile. You know, after a while, they get, begin to wear and uh, tear. Uh, they begin to break down over time. Uh, the dies are no exception. The working dies have little bits and pieces fall off of them all the time. Uh, the, this die chip right here in the G is one such example of that. Uh, we also have one right here on the lighthouse on the reverse. You can see this uh, this die chip is not supposed to be there. Uh, you know, it kind of looks like it could be a tree, uh, but it's not. Okay, if you looked at a clean die uh, or a clean Apostle Islands quarter uh, from fresh dies, you'll see that that's not on there. And then finally, we also have one little hidden die chip underneath uh, the this uh, rower's arm area. Uh, pretty pretty hard to see. I mean, if you're not looking for it. You won't know that it's there again if if you um have the perfect magnifier and i do sell them by the way in my amazon links down below so go ahead and check them out they are a an essential tool in this hobby if you don't have it you're not going to succeed i will just straight up tell you that because a lot of the things that you're looking for are not naked eye visible okay this die chip you wouldn't even know it's there unless you're using a magnifier um, but yeah, things like this generally get, get lost, you know, uh, to any just regular, uh, individual that has this coin in their purse or their pocket. Um, uh, people just don't think about it. Uh, so with all the little die chips are quite interesting, by the way, the seller did a great job at blowing up the images. So that way they're nice and clear. This sold for $8. All right. And again, that's not too bad. That's a really respectable amount of money. Uh, was that 32 times face? I mean, you could hardly go wrong there. Uh, this one's pretty cool. Uh, probably unlikely that you'll just find this just out of the blue. Uh, I mean, if you did come across one of these in like an old collection, you'll know what it is. It's a 1905 Indian head scent. It's in really fantastic shape. Uh, I would venture to guess it's kind of like that about uncirculated, maybe a low-end mint state brown example. Uh, but this one right here is off center by about 10%. Uh, you do have um, uh, quite a bit of the detail in Liberty. And it looks like you almost have four diamonds on this ribbon, which is kind of like one of the major kind of key areas that graders look at to determine not only the, uh, the condition of the coin, but also the strike. Uh, because you can have a mint state indian head scent but with a weak strike that won't have all four diamonds on that ribbon now this coin right here no doubt about it sought after by some of the most discerning collectors of early tight pieces this one sold for 233 dollars and 90 cents and coming up here we have a 1969 d roosevelt dime 
Uh, it's, it's nothing major, but you guys see that little curved clip there by the motto, In God We Trust. And that is indeed the error we are focusing on on this particular coin, which, by the way, looks, looks pretty well circulated. Um, what's cool is you got a bonus, uh, what they call Blakesley effect, and that's simply just a flattening uh, of this opposite edge to where that rim clip is. So that's definitely something to look out for, but it does not mean that every single uh, rim clipped coin has that feature on there. Uh, it just helps validate it a lot better. Uh, this one right here, ladies and gentlemen, sold for $14.99, which is a really good amount of money for something like this. Uh, I mean, you know, um, 150 times face value is pretty good uh, for any coin, but, you know, just a regular old dime with one singular clip that sells for 15 bucks. Sign me up all day long for that. And I'll also uh, let you guys know that searching through your scrap silver is also equally important. You could just find a whole just ton of different just hidden treasure in there. Um, here's another one right here. It's a 1963 Franklin half dollar. I mean, sure, it does look like to be a pretty nice condition coin. Uh, it does have a few milk spots. It's got some bag marks. Uh, so it's not exactly a premier coin in the sense that, oh, I'm going to go ahead and send it off to grading thinking you're going to get back a mid-state 66 full belt lines. Um, not this one. Uh, however, it is uh, valuable for a different reason. This one also has a rim clip at the kind of like K6 or 6 o'clock position on the front of the coin there uh, under the word we. So it's a nice curved clip. Um, you know, you could turn essentially what is like a 6 or $7 coin. And in this case, this one sold for $39.59. You could sell the coin if you find it in your scrap silver pile. Uh, turn around, sell for 40 bucks, and then buy more silver. And then you're going to feel really good with that exchange. Here's another really cool coin. This time it's a uh, no-date Roosevelt dime. It's uh, struck off center by about 80, 85%, somewhere around there. But what you guys probably don't know about this coin is that this is an earlier pre-1965 90% silver planchet. Pretty cool. I like it. Um, the coin's in pretty decent shape. Uh, if you come across these, possibly a coin show, and maybe the de dealer mismarked it as being a clad off-center coin, you could really take advantage of that. Now, as I've said in previous videos, off-center struck coins are widely collected if they have a full date. And what I mean widely, you're going to have a lot more interested parties looking for this coin with a date because they do collect by date set. Um, and with that being said, if there is a specific date that is not as well known to be an off-center struck error coin, um, you're going to have a number of interested parties kind of fighting over it. And that's what you want. You want some of these unique coins that you don't normally come across being fought over by between, say, three to five people. And you'll really see the prices go up on these. This one sold for $79.49. Wow, that's impressive for a silver coin with no date. Now, this is the first time that I've ever talked about this particular error. Now, at first glance, some of you will say, well, you know, that's a pretty neat centered broad strike. But it's not a broad strike. Okay, what this is his, uh, here is a 1998P Washington quarter that was struck on what they call a Type 1 planchet. Now, what exactly is that? Well, there's Type 1 and Type 2 planchets. If you've ever seen a blank planchet, and that's the raw planchet before a coin is even struck on it. Um, a type 2 planchet will have the upset rims on it, and a type 1 will not. It's just a completely flat looking disc. It looks like it was punched out of an electrical box conduit, if you guys know what those look like. But essentially, a type 1 planchet had never made the process into the upsetting mill. Okay, so the upsetting mill forms the coin to its specific size. Uh, or the planchet, rather, to its specific size for that coin. In addition, it will also upset what they call a proto-rim. So the proto-rim is just really a raised rim around that blank. And that's usually the case before the coin is even struck. All right, so they, um, the U.S. Mint wants these Type 2 planchets to go through the upsetting mill. 
and um, they'll get batched into a completely different uh, hopper and then they'll go to the mid presses and then they'll be uh, fed you know accordingly into the mid press for strikes for striking um, so when you when you have a coin that's struck on a type one it has no rim the uh, the planchet's a little bit bigger and that's the kind of end result of what you see on this 1998 quarter uh, it sold for $26 pretty nice which normally um you know maybe a broad struck regular example sells for roughly maybe 10 15 bucks maybe 20 bucks uh these definitely do command a little bit more of a premium and you just don't see the type one strikes uh compared to regular broad strikes and what we have here again you guys know how much i love bicentennial coinage whether it's the quarter half dollar or the ike dollar if you're able to score some sort of neat error on any of these coins, people tend to take notice. It's a beloved series of coins, you know, the three coin set, and it's a very, uh, very popular um, design, especially the quarter drummer boy type. Now, this is a 1976 D. It's a Denver minted coin. If you haven't seen it yet this is really cool on the reverse you have this raised uh thin line right here right on the rim and what that is is uh that's actually a rim cud a cud is just simply another word for a die break that uh, that is right on the edge and it involves in some aspect the design of the coin now a rim cud is just on the rim as its name denotes but when you have a cud on any one of the bicentennial coins and it doesn't matter how um, how minor or how major they are um, they, there is quite a bit of desirability now this one right here sold for seven dollars and that's fine that's exactly the kind of market that you would see for a rim cud on uh, this quarter uh, the quarter has been circulated so you know uh, there is that as well and the seven dollars is with three bits so there's probably two people battling back and forth uh to own this one and then here's another rim cut uh quarter this time on a much newer 2018 p this time a cumberland island national park quarter and as you can see this one is actually on the obverse under the word dollar so the first few letters in the word dollar you can see that rim uh rim cut so a piece of the die had broken off right there on that rim area of the die and this one sold for five dollars and eleven cents all right so that's not bad 25 times face value uh there's a little bit of a close-up of the rim cut again these are generally overlooked especially in the lincoln cent series you will just it blows my mind how many of these i find in lincoln cent hunting and speaking of which we have a pair of 1983 uh lincoln cents uh, these are the memorial back types and these actually are full-blown cuts they actually go to the design structure of the coin you can see uh, both are pretty much near the same spot on the obverse you can see right here at the base of the bust on both sides so you have uh, a couple of really nice looking uh, small cuts there and uh, the coins are in decent shape if you looked on the reverse uh, there is some staining you know uh, which is quite normal for a coin being you know over 30 years old uh, but this uh, pair right here sold for $24.11, so it's not too bad. All right, more scrap silver treasure. This time, another 1963 Franklin half dollar. You could see uh, already that there is a pretty sizable crack or uh, fissure right here in the coin. And um, that was there even before the coin was struck. So this is simply just a defective planchet, probably more at the end of strip um, punch, punch out of this planchet, um, the blank rather. Uh, so, you know, it's just, it's a really ragged uh, end, end piece coin I, is what I kind of, kind of commonly refer to it. Um, but these are actually more common on silver than you guys believe. I found them on uh, Morgan and Peace Dollars. I found them on Quarters. Actually, I'm staring at one right now. Um, it was a 1948 Quarter. And, um, you know, I generally find them in scrap silver bins. And uh, believe it or not, these have a little bit of value. Uh, they're, they're not the sexiest errors you could find out there. That's probably not the right word to describe that. But you could take, a, again, a coin that's worth about $7 worth of melt value and turn it into $16.75, which is 
which is what this one sold for, and that's with 12 bids altogether. All right, so we have a nice, uh, nice, honest, worn 1920S Buffalo Nickel. Uh, not a particularly high-grade example, although it has some pretty neat-looking and proper alloy mix, and that's kind of like the tiger striping that you see on the planchet. Uh, but there are a number of collectors that look for these based off of the third feather, which this one does not have. So this is one of those two feather varieties, and there's actually, you know, a good eight or nine different dates that you could look for, 1930S being kind of like that tail end the last year in which you could find a three, uh, two feather, rather. Uh, this one right here is in decent shape. I would say it's probably a net VF2025. Uh, you do have a partial horn on this one. And this one sold for 60 bucks, which, um, again, proves that these coins carry a pretty good value, especially when they look decent enough that they fit right into a, uh, a good looking collection. Um, I'm not, I don't know if this is one of the more difficult dates. I know there's a few others that are just straight up, uh, you know, non-existent out there. So, uh, you know, if you're out in the show and you're looking through uh, just scrap buffaloes, uh, that you could buy for a buck or two. Uh, make sure you look for the two feathers. All right, we got one more of these again. A brand new 2021 Tuskegee Airmen. This is a Philadelphia minted coin. And this one has that similar strike through right on the building, on the reverse of the coin. So it looks like the building's on fire. This is probably one of your more minor progression appearance, you know, type of strike throughs for this coin. I've seen the strike throughs like way bigger, like, you know, like five alarm fire type strike through on the building. Uh, this one's quite minor and uh, even still sold for $46.75. I also wanted to let you guys know another 2021 Washington quarter, uh, Washington crossing the Delaware quarter with the crown die chip, like the full on like late stage die chip that goes into E Pluribusunum. Sold again for about 140 bucks. I mean, those things are are on fire right now. So again, make sure you keep an eye out for those. They do exist out there, and uh, the few that are being sold every week and the numbers are continuously dropping uh, are selling for well over a hundred dollars at this point. Now here's another cool, uh, probably quite scarce date of off-center struck Roosevelt dime, this time a 1970D. What I like most about this one is it has that, uh, that reverse of, um, God, what is that? Reverse of 1969 or something like that. It's got the two, uh, two valleys in the flame. So this is both a variety and an error. Impressive. Very nice. This one sold for $29.98. The coin is generally in pretty nice shape as well. Keep in mind, it's a copper nickel clad composition. Huh, I think this is our first currency uh, paper money uh, item on the list today. But uh, this was actually sold by, I believe, David Lawrence. Uh, he's uh, one of the big auctioneers. He even does eBay sales as well. So we have a 2003 A Series $1 Federal Reserve note. This is Friedberg uh, 1928D, uh, in case you care about that sort of thing. But uh, what's even more interesting is that this is a really nice error on an otherwise modern note. Um, you don't really see much here on the front of the note. You know, the 7 here uh, in the serial number uh, appears to be slightly turned, but it's not enough to really make a huge difference for the appeal and uh, uh, just overall value of the note. But this is why you look for these and this is what you do to them. You sell them and you make a ton of money. Uh, this is a uh, front to back wet ink transfer note. I've talked about these quite a bit. Uh, again, you know, when the sheets are being printed, you know, the ink is still wet. So you're going to get some of that natural transfer onto the other subsequent sheet. And it's always going to be backwards. So when you see these wet ink transfers, you'll see the uh, the words are spelled backwards. Okay, so they're mi they're mirror inversed, mirror imaged uh, on there. Uh, so make sure it is that. That's how you can tell the legitimacy of it. Uh, pretty nice. I mean, it's a nice raw, crisp, uncirculated note. This one, through twenty eight bids, sold for sixty six dollars and ninety nine cents. 
All right, more off-center struck coins, this time a 1999. This one looks to be also a Denver-minted Jefferson nickel. This one's off-center by about 60%, uh, maybe a little bit more than that, but I'm using 60% on this one. A uh, pretty nice coin if you need this particular date for an off-center strike, you know, compilation. Um, you know, you could do a lot worse. This one's in, you know, generally nice shape. I would say it's mid-state. This one sold for $25. All right, here we go again. And this is, ironically, the same seller that sold, I think, the last two or three examples of this coin. This one looks pretty nice. Um, this is a 2,000-piece Sacagawea dollar, uh, commonly referred to as the golden dollar back in the day. But this uh, this particular date in Midmark has a few really cool varieties to look for. Um, and on this one, you are looking for the... Uh, the Wounded Eagle or the Speared Eagle, it goes by a couple different names, but you know, you do have a pair of die gouges that go through the breast of this eagle and into the wing, and then you can see that secondary little die gouge there. And that's how it got its namesake. So it looks like the eagle legit was speared, you know. Um, but yeah, pretty cool uh, variety. Uh, this is also FS901 in the Cherry Picker's Guide. It's it's owned that, you know, for a number of years now. And it, this is always desirable. And you would not believe um, how many of these are still out there. They're not inherently rare. I mean, there's enough of them out there in, uh, in the circulation landscape where you could find more. I mean, this same seller just this year i would imagine had sold about a half a dozen of these and they're all quite valuable this one right here sold for 82 dollars and 26 cents and that's with only two bits the only uh condition of note on this coin is it does have a little spot of corrosion on the back near the rim um, so there is that and that's been taken into account for this particular coin now, here's some nice early cherry picking. Here's an 1883 Liberty Nickel. It's in really nice shape. And this is the uh, the No Sense uh, Reverse. Uh, this was a coin that, you know, back in the day, um, unscrupulous uh, counterfeiters were plating these in gold because they didn't have five cents on the reverse. Um, these, these guys were plating these and they were passing them off as uh, half eagles, uh, half gold half eagles back in the day which is $5 of purchasing power, you know, which is quite a bit for, you know, late 1800s. Uh, but this one right here is uh, on the list for a different reason. It's got a pretty nice uh, lamination on the reverse right here, uh, or maybe just a planchet flaw. It, it could be either or, uh, but you do see a little bit of that corresponding weakness here on the obverse as well. So uh, maybe that was split before the strike. You know, kind of hard to say, but this coin is in relatively nice shape. Uh, 17 bids altogether, and it's sold for $24.50. All right, we got a trio of 1986 Washington Quarters. Uh, well, at least two of them are. I don't know about this one. Kind of hard to tell, but these are all Philadelphia coins. Um, let's see, all three of them are off-center struck. Uh, you know, pretty nice high grade examples. You got, you know, you got one of each different type. So, uh, they're not all the same. That's quite nice. Uh, the coins again are in beautiful shape. They're a nice mid state 63, 64 type of level of grade. And, uh, this one sold for $74 and 95 cents. And that's with 34 combined bids. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people interested in this group. And again, I always tell folks, look out for the multi-coin lots. The bigger and the more quality, the better. You buy the lots for a low amount of money. You turn around, you sell the coins individually. And hopefully, the, the big goal out of all this is to double your money. So something to keep in mind, make sure you track them. Uh, don't overpay for them because you don't want to be stuck and you don't want to break even and put in all the work. Um, it's just not worth it. But do keep an eye out for them. Here's here's an old friend, 2017 Lincoln Shield Cent. Uh, it's the uh, only date of Lincoln with an actual physical P mint mark, and that's to commemorate the 225th anniversary of the Philadelphia Mint. And that's why it's on there. Uh, but this one is on here for a different reason. Uh, Lincoln's head is literally floating off of its body, and that's because uh, this was a common occurrence on these coins. 
you had quite a bit of over abrasion of that neck area. So a mint employee just went, went to town, you know, to uh, kind of polish that area a little bit too robust. And um, as a result, you have a floating head uh, on this, on this body. So um, yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, this one, Sold for eleven dollars and eleven cents. So pretty neat, cool. Uh, <laughs> eleven dollars, I get it. You know, kind of like a a play on the whole thing there. And we have uh, another lot from the same seller as the quarters. Uh, we have three off center struck Jefferson nickels. Okay, none of them have a readable date, but if you're looking for a uh, premium three coin lot uh, that's all in really nice shape, uh, this one's for you. I mean, it's in pretty nice shape. You even have some full step action. On this middle coin here and this lot sold for $36.95 and that's with 17 bids altogether here's another nickel 1983 Philadelphia Jefferson nickel uh, another one uh, of the same type of die break cut on the top of Jefferson's head I think I talked about this one last episode and probably the episode before that uh, which just goes to show you that it's not particularly a rare cud so for the you folks there on the east coast of the u.s um yeah please do find more of these <laughs> uh, they, they're worthwhile and um you know if you need to sell a coin where you could fill up your gas tank to the brim this is the one here for you well unless you have a big truck with like a 28 gallon tank that ain't happening uh but this one right here uh has that corresponding weakness on the opposite side of that cud so make sure that that is on there. And this one sold for $46.20, and that's with 11 bids altogether. Okay, so we have a number of listings, all from the same seller. And uh, this is kind of like my spotlight seller of the episode, and they go by the name South Park Coins, and I believe it's all one word, South Park Coins. So you could always tell uh, their listings from the uh, kind of cloth background uh, on here. And uh, all these coins are phenomenal. And uh, we have a 1986D Washington Quarter with a pretty sizable curved clip on there. All right. So um, it's a nice error. It's not like out of sight. It, it's a uh, great high-end kind of like grade as well. I mean, there's not a whole lot of distracting stuff going on here. Um, and this one sold for $18.46. And that's with 13 bids. So there are a group of collectors buying these and um, assembling date sets as well of clipped coins. Uh, you'd be surprised how many different types of collectors there are for these errors. Here's another 86, this time a Philadelphia. And this one's off center by probably 10%. Again, it's a really nice coin with a full date. And a mint mark, so that that matters uh, to the collector base. And uh, this one sold for twenty dollars and forty three cents, and that's with thirteen bids. Here's a uh, statehood quarter. This time a North Carolina. Uh, this I think we talked about North Carolina maybe a few weeks ago uh, of the same type, but this one's off center by about five to seven percent. Uh, again, errors on statehood quarters are now coming onto the scene after making a uh, a little bit of an absence for you know the better part of the last six months to a year. Um, people kind of generally realizing the potential of these coins. They have been going up in value. Uh, this one right here, no exception, sold for nineteen dollars and forty six cents, and that's with fourteen bids. Um, this particular image right here, I've left South Park Coins. Their logo is at the bottom left, and it's like in the form of a little uh, green tree. So you could always look for their listings based off of that as well. Here's a 77 Philadelphia Washington Quarter. This one's off center by about 10, 12% ish, somewhere around there, give or take. Uh, again, another nice high, high end you know, piece uh, for a uh, date set. Uh, or just to have for like maybe a birth year set or something to that effect. Uh, this one sold for $37.95, and that's with 20 bid, 21 bids collected. All right, so the most priciest and uh, the most craziest of all errors from South Park Coins has got to be this 1990 Philadelphia 
Roosevelt Dime. This one has two errors. Okay, so the main strike was off center by about 15%. That's number one. Number two, it's double struck. So the secondary strike on this coin is roughly 90% off center. So you have an incredibly amazing, um, you know, I appeal with this one. It's extremely dramatic. And if you added this to your collection, most certainly it would probably end up being like a centerpiece to any error collection. Uh, this one right here sold for $178.45. And uh, you guessed it, 27 bids combined on that one. And we also have a 1995P. Uh, South Park really loves his quarters. And we have another one here. Uh, this one's off center by about 15-20%. Uh, again, another high-end piece. I'm sure uh, this individual collected these at one point. Uh, and that's why they cherry-picked only the finest specimens. This one sold for $27.43. And that's with 8 bids. Here's a 77D. Uh, although it was misattributed on the listing as being an off-center struck. Okay, this one's a little bit different. What we actually have here are misaligned dies. Okay, so uh, as you can see, the front of the coin, the obverse, looks to be off-center struck. I mean, that's a given. But when you look on the reverse, the coin is actually pretty well centered. And then, of course, you have a little bit of weakness here over the where it's quarter dollar. And that's normal for a misaligned die. So the dies aren't aligned up perfectly where you get a very, very well centered strike on both the obverse and the reverse of the coin. Um, you know, so, you know, when you have this kind of offset on a misaligned die on one side to where it's cutting off devices, that's where these things are worth the most amount of money. And uh, this one right here sold for $25.70 and that's with 19 total bids. Here's a 1943 um, Steely. All right. Very cool. Uh, he also had a 1943 blank planchet for a steel cent that ended up selling for like 60 bucks. So that's also worth noting. But this one right here has a uh, pretty shallow, just minor rim clip. Okay. Not even that curved at all. Uh, and it does have some Blakesley on this one. But the coin is in pretty nice shape. It doesn't have, you know, any corrosion or rust or anything that would be detracting of this example. Um, and, yeah, look for it, definitely. I mean, I think I probably have a similar type of clip on another 1943 in my collection, although it's in pretty rough shape. It's got rust and uh, oxidation on there. This one right here is sold for $25.45, and that's with 10 bits altogether. All right, we're down to our last few. This is the uh, the final coin of the South Park listings for the uh, for the day, a 1996P. Uh, so this one's interesting. This is a, another uh, uh, two error type coin. Okay, you you have a uh, uh, what appears to be a broad strike uh, that's pretty well centered. Uh, you do have a full date. And you also have a, uh, a brockage uh, that is off-center there. So you see that indent. Uh, that's what that is. Uh, pretty crazy coin. Uh, a lot of stuff going on here. I, I like that it has the full date. That matters most to collectors. And this one sold for $77.84. And that's with 16 bits. Pretty cool. But you know what's even cooler? is when you're able to find a proof set like this. And keep in mind, this proof set is like five, six bucks at the local coin shop. However, this is a, a set that a lot of people, apparently the dealer as well, overlooked that has an incredibly valuable coin in there. And that's going to be that Roosevelt dime. Guess what it's missing, ladies and gentlemen? It has no S mint mark. So as you guys know, the proof sets were produced at the San Francisco Mint in 1983. They all had S mint marks above the date or somewhere close to the date on all the coins. This one has no S mint mark whatsoever. All right. So that was obviously done in error. Okay. A mint employee forgot to, uh, uh, to tap in the, um, uh, uh, the mid mark onto the uh, the working die at the point at that point, which is kind of hard to screw up considering that proof strikes are some of the highest quality uh, strikes that you could find. But apparently they've done this a few times. Uh, also on the 1990 Lincoln cent, the Jefferson nickel. I mean the list goes on and on. 
Uh, 83, no S, Roosevelt dime, um, sold in the set. So someone bought the set for what I consider to be like cheap, five, six bucks, turned it around and sold it for $535 and six cents. And ladies and gentlemen, that's 19 bids altogether. So there was a number of people very interested. They wanted a nice virgin copy of this coin still in its original proof set original government packaging and it'll probably end up in a graded holder one day one can only speculate but i'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen with this coin and that ladies and gentlemen is why we go out and we search through some of these coins that other people would generally overlook right these are unloved sets 1980s proof set are a dime a dozen well not exactly a dime a dozen but you guys know what i mean they are cheap and like all good things, they all come to an end. And that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode, this midweek episode of the Pocket Change Market Report. I would love to hear your thoughts. Did you have a favorite coin or set of coins on this list? I would love to hear about it. And as you can see, I got our email flashed up on this screen here for you. Go ahead and send us a little line. You know, you want to know more about the coins in your collection. You want to know more of what you have, how to tell if it's an error or a variety. Send us your coin pictures to info at livecoinqa.com. Uh, we have a panel of experts that can help you with your inquiry. And, uh, you know, we may even highlight your coin on the next live stream. And we do that every Monday. Um, so that's going to go ahead and do it. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound for this video. Don't forget to like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy today's content. Hit the dislike button if you don't. That's important as well. Uh, you know, just go ahead and show your love or dislike, whatever you want. Uh, but that's going to go ahead and do it, Coinaholics. I wish you guys the best in all of your hunting endeavors for the rest of the week. Um, but yeah, that's it. You guys take care. Have a good one. And I will see you on the next coin video. So long.